Hello, you're watching UATV. My name is Tamara Rosevan. Joining us today is Martin Hagstrom. He's the Swedish ambassador to Ukraine. We'll be talking about security and Swedish-Ukrainian cooperation. Welcome. Thanks so much for joining me. Thank you. So we are at this security forum. Uh, there's leaders from the Baltics that are here and everybody's discussing security and making Europe more united and more secure. How does uh, Sweden plan to contribute to this? Well, we, uh, we try to contribute, of course, as much as, as, we, as we can. Uh, we, of course, as a non-aligned country, we uh, put a lot of uh, importance, uh, attach a lot of importance to, uh, to uh, the general European uh, security architecture, the OSCE, uh, the right of all countries to choose their own foreign, foreign policy uh, um, priorities. And uh, since we are politically very, very strongly supportive of that, we are um, a loyal and, and, and uh, very uh, focused EU member state. So EU is very important for us uh, also. Uh, and uh, we want the EU to be a strong foreign policy actor. Uh, and we have also a cooperation which is developing with uh, with, uh, with, with NATO, but uh, not aiming at, at uh, membership, but aiming at uh, cooperating where, where, where we can and where, where there are similar interests. I mean, we are supporting, for example, some of the NATO trust funds uh, in Ukraine uh, to support, for example, uh, issues like, like gender, uh, some other issues like, like that. And um, a lot of the Baltic leaders um, at the Kiev Security Forum, they spoke about um, a resurgent Russia, uh, aggressive Russia, that a lot of countries are, are feeling quite, quite threatened, especially with um, uh, you know, just on the border, Russia has been sta staging military drills. And um, does Sweden feel threatened by, by Russia, do you think? I don't think threatened is, is the right world, word. Uh, of course, we, uh, we follow what is happening uh, in, in our close neighborhood. Russia is, is uh, uh, not a direct neighbor, but a close, close neighbor. And um, of course, we, we are concerned by, by uh, Russian uh, actions, including in, in, in Ukraine, not least in Ukraine. Uh, the, the illegal annexation of, of Crimea, uh, the aggression in, in eastern Ukraine. And of course, we, we, we have to follow these things uh, very closely. And they are also, as I mean, I mentioned, the, the uh, European security architecture. Of course, all of these actions are very much uh, not in line with, the, with the, in breach of the, the European security architecture, which is so essential for our own, own security. Um, we are also, uh, there have a number of decisions have been taken this last year to, to years to uh, strengthen uh, our, our own defense uh, capabilities. Uh, and I guess that's a process that will, will continue. And of course, I mean, the, the, the general security situation in, in, uh, in Europe is uh, the basis for, for such uh, decisions. Now, um, something that has been s talked about at the Kiev Security Forum is a Marshall Plan in, in how to counter um, an aggressive neighbor. Does, does Sweden potentially look at that and uh, look of ways implementing this so-called Marshall Plan as well? Is, are there plans on how to make Sweden more secure in terms of uh, border? Are, are these concerns present? I mean, talking about the Marshall Plan, I guess what has been discussed then is support for, for Ukraine. And uh, of course, we, we are bilaterally, we have supported reforms in, in Ukraine since the mid-90s uh, with the development cooperation programs. Uh, of course, uh, as you know, reform progress in Ukraine over these past 25, well, 20 years or when we have had, had this cooperation has been very un uneven. Uh, so there have been occasions when we have closed down programs because there has been no clear political will to, to carry out reforms in the past. Uh, these past three years, uh, I must say, we have seen uh, a stronger political will. We have seen lots of, of reforms being en enacted that we are trying to support. We are trying to look at areas where we see, I mean, which fit into our strategy, which is based on where we see that we have kind of an added uh, can add something, have an added value, where we have our own experiences that we can share. 
so we work in areas like environment, where we focus on energy efficiency. I mean, Sweden is a northern country where uh, you need to use lots of, of uh, heating, for example, and we have worked a lot on, on energy efficiency, so we feel we have something to, to share there. Uh, Ukraine, not being a northern country, Nordic, northern country still has cold winters, of course, so it's quite similar uh, in, in, in that sense. We, we work on, on democracy, uh, good governance, uh, gender equality, promotion, uh, second, second area. And the third is, is market development. And we are a uh, mid-sized country, very, very dependent on foreign trade. Uh, we uh, uh, believe very much in, in open trade. That is what has built Sweden over, over the years. Do you think that's something that Ukraine should uh, invest in as well? Open open trade, open market, open business? Yeah, I mean, Ukraine is investing in that. By uh, Ukraine has, has concluded a, a deep and comprehensive free trade area with, uh, with the EU. Uh, we very much support that, including through projects where we try to, to uh, help uh, Ukrainian businesses uh, exporting to, to Europe, uh, of course in particular to Sweden. Uh, we had, uh, that's uh, compared to many other projects, quite a small scale project, but we had a, a project where we uh, invited Ukrainian companies to uh, learn how it works to export to Sweden. And we will try to repeat that in, in, in June on a little bit, on a bigger bigger scale, try to, to uh, uh, promote imports to Sweden from Ukraine. And uh, how does, do you guys plan to um, attract investment or tell uh, investors, potential investors, about how it, it is to start business in Ukraine or how to expand business in Ukraine? Is it something that you guys are concentrating on? So, I mean, we do uh, inform our businesses, of course, of opportunities. And this, uh, I mean, in, in June, we will have this uh, Swedish-Ukraine Business Forum, which is a yearly event. It's the sixth such event already. Uh, where we cooperate in particular with Swedish businesses that are already here, uh, but also where we try to inform Swedish businesses back, back in Sweden about uh, new opportunities. Of course, one thing that we mention then uh, in particular is this deep and comprehensive free trade area, which means that uh, if you produce something now in, in, in Ukraine, you can export it to, to the EU without, well, in most areas with, with zero duties. Of course, uh, given that the, in, in Ukraine, I mean, Ukraine has a very well educa educated workforce at this point because of the economic crisis these last years, it's uh, quite cheap for, for a foreign uh, company to, for example, produce something here and sell it on the EU market. But, but we, we, we do see such, uh, you know, uh, opportunities in general. But this is, this is all part of outsourcing. But is that, does that put Ukraine in a, in a, in a stronger position, do you think? Uh, this puts Ukraine in a stronger position. IT is one, also, one other area which is interesting for, for, uh, for, uh, also for, for, for Swedish companies. There are already some, some Swedish-owned uh, factories, there are banks, there are uh, IT companies again the different, in, in different, uh, different sectors. We do not see at this stage a big inflow of additional investment. And um, one, I think, important reason for this, and this, I mean, if you talk with, with uh, Ukrainian, Ukrainian government, uh, it's clear that they also have their sights very much set on, on this. Problems like, like uh, corruption, problems like, like uh, the judiciary, which tends to, to be a problem sometimes for, for investors. Uh, and of course, investors, they do talk to each other. Uh, so what we are always saying uh, is that the best investment promotion uh, is to uh, have a very close dialogue with uh, the current investors to see to that they feel, feel comfortable. So they get the feedback and things like that. Now, Sweden is known to be a very uh, environmentally friendly, a very um, expensive, at times Stockholm is, 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 is a very expensive city. Now, what advice would you give to the Ukrainian government in terms of how your system and how the government works, works there and how well the country's doing, really. It's also ranked one of the happiest countries in the world. Um, what advice would you give to the Ukrainian government? Top, top three advice on, on how Ukraine can become more like Sweden. Well, 
that's a, a tough one. Um, I, I think that there are many things that that uh, can be done. I, I think uh, uh, one issue that I think is very important for the development of the of the Swedish model uh, and how things work in Sweden. We are also very highly taxed in Sweden. We have high, high taxes. Uh, and one important reason why that works is that people in general in Sweden have trust uh, in the system. You know that if you pay taxes, you will also get something back from the, from the state and that it is worth it. It is worth for citizens to pool their resources because they feel that they will get something back, back from the state. And uh, probably because of, of quite a, a rough history in, in Ukraine since independence, uh, the, the, if you look at opinion polls, you can see that there is not such a strong trust in, in Ukraine uh, towards, uh, actually towards really anyone, uh, not towards the state, not towards companies. And I think that would, is something that I would uh, probably uh, try to, to prioritize, to try to build trust over time. Uh, and this is a slow process, I think. It's very much about uh, uh, implementing these reforms that have, have been uh, that are on, on the agenda, looking at issues like like corruption. Uh, I think one really important issue that is not discussed so much is the issue of gender uh, equality. It's also something that um, has contributed a lot to making Sweden into the kind of country it is uh, today. That I mean, including in, in terms of of, of uh, wealth that uh, it, it does make more sense to make full use of the whole population uh, in terms of economic activity than just focusing on, on half of the population. Uh, so so, uh, so and gender, gender equality is, is, is a key issue that Sweden has, has developed and, and, and is very strong on. And Ukraine still needs to kind of improve, I, I suppose. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. It was, it was a pleasure to have you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, my name is Tamara Rosevan, and you're watching UATV. Yeah.